Hey, 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 family, it's your girl Evelyn, and I am back with another video. And today I want to talk to you about my journey to finding, not even just found, finding my personal style in my 40s. Now, if you've been with my channel a long time, I think I started this channel in my 20s. I, well, actually, I know that I was in my 20s, right? And so I did a video several years ago, a quick video about like curating your beauty, right? But I, I think a more accurate way of saying it is like developing my personal style in my 40s. Now, let me be clear. I am not on some oh, let me develop my personal style in my 40s because that's what people tell you to do in your 40s. It's like I, in my 40s, I feel so much more like myself. Call that age, call that therapy, call that evolution. You call it what you want, right? But I feel so much more like myself <laughs> in this phase of my life than I ever have before. And I want the outside of me to match what I see in my brain, right? I wanted to, I wanted to, I want the two to become one, if you will. So let me tell you how I kind of got on this, right? I, and this was pre pandemic, right? So a lot of people have talked about how, you know, being in the house, they feel like, you know, they kind of like, they just can't wear certain clothes anymore. And they're like, everything's about loungewear and all that kind of stuff. I, that wasn't my story as far as like, that's when I feel like I lost my personal style. I feel like for me, my style journey, which I wouldn't say I'm a fashion girl at all, but I definitely am someone who appreciates my outer beauty as much as my inner beauty. Um, I enjoy it. I love the art of adornment, if you will. And so I will say that my journey is a little bit different. So let me just give you a little bit of backstory on kind of like how I came to this point of really wanting to spend some focused attention and energy and resources on on curating my personal style and like and then I'll walk you through kind of like what I've been doing and then what I plan on doing in the future. So basically, I would say that my personal style journey probably started like my senior year of high school. Uh, <laughs> like before that, you could even give me the iron, okay? And when like my I had I had acne and braces, you know, and I was in the band like I was that girl in high school. But then the braces came off and the acne cleared up. And so by the time my senior year was there, I was like, oh, I kind of had this new identity, if you will. And then that identity kind of went with me to college and I went from a very. I would say mixed but predominantly white high school to going to a HBCU. So moving from Missouri, going to Alabama, culture shock, all that kind of stuff, right? And like I was the end thing, right? As far as like the standard of beauty, right? I'd like it was the first time in my life that my build, my aesthetic. Now, granted, I was like 115 pounds soaking wet at the time, okay? But this was over 20 years ago. Um and it really just kind of encouraged me to lean into my personal style. And I will say over the years, what I think or what I know to be true is the way I've always wanted to look, there was an undercurrent of that. But whether I let trends or my age or what other people thought I should look like affect that is what happened. And then I would say that I, I hit a point in my 30s where I was in community with people who were who who personal style was not a priority for them right and again for some people it's not a priority and there's nothing wrong with that personal style and the way I present myself and the way I feel about the way that I look is important to me right um I do think it's aesthetics matter uh do not in the same proportion as what I think the inside matters but it's all it's like it's what you lead with right it's kind of like if I make you a delicious dinner, but I bring it to you on a garbage can lid, it's already, it could be the most delicious thing, but the presentation is off, right? That's all, I mean, you know, that, blame it on the chef and me, but that's always how I have viewed your outer appearance, right? It's not the main thing, but it's the leading thing, right? It's the first thing that's encountered, even for myself, when I wake up in the morning, you know, is what I see first, right? And when I go to bed at night, I'm the last thing that I see, so Anyway, so in my 30s, I found myself in community and um, having having some friends where personal style was not a priority for them. And so I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where, you know, I, I'm like a makeup girly, you know, I like jewelry, hair, 
earring, earrings, you know, bracelets. I like a dress, you know, I, I, and my part of my personal style is very, very feminine. And so, uh, so imagine being that person in a community or in certain friend groups where it's like, they don't wear makeup. They don't will have perfume skirts are not a thing right you kind of stand out and I and I would say that I never considered myself a person to care um but what I noticed is over time if I knew I was going to be with this particular set of friends is I would kind of tone it down a little bit right just because it was like oh okay we knew you was gonna be five minutes late because you know what I'm saying you had to do your makeup and like oh or there will always be a disclaimer about like you don't have to get dressed up whatever and and I had to come to the realization that that's just who I am right that's why I say part of this is age part of this might have been you know years of therapy whatever the case may be right and so uh I got to a point where I woke up one day and I did not recognize myself as far as the way I was presenting myself and I was like I like the moment I was allowed to wear makeup in high school, I was all about it. It was fun to me. It was a form of creative expression. I've never been the person that's like, oh, I can't go out the house without makeup or that I don't feel attractive without makeup. It's been more so like I, it's the enjoyment for me. Right. Uh, there's a movie. What did she say? Some people do it for the enjoyment. Right. <laughs> and so the art of adornment, if you will, getting dressed, smelling good, you know, exfoliating, right? Like putting the outfit together, having my hair and my nails together. Like I enjoy that experience just as much as I enjoy the end result, right? So um, I was saying that I think I got to the point, it's funny enough, during the pandemic when we were all at home where I was like enough is enough so interestingly I feel like some people have had a much different experience where they feel like maybe they lost some of their personal style or their desire to adorn themselves during the pandemic because we were at home and mine was the complete opposite it was almost like if I'm gonna be at home I, then I'm at least gonna be fabulous if I'm gonna be on these zooms I'm gonna, I'm gonna be looking snatched and beat on these zooms okay <laughs> and so um that was really when the wheels started turning for me. And I will be quite transparent. You know, um, if you've watched this channel for any number of years, you know that I am a person of faith. I'm a spiritual person. And I actually really feel like God told me to work on my beauty. I know that that sounds crazy. And at the time, or and maybe it doesn't, it doesn't sound crazy to me. Now, at the time, it sounded crazy to me. I was like, beauty is so fickle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, clearly God is not telling me to intentionally work on my beauty right like not like oh you're not beautiful but like lean into it enhance it right like curate it like enjoy this part of you that I have created and so I remember being very prayerful into my journal time and I was telling a friend about it and I think I talked about this on one of the live streams that I did a couple of years ago with Patricia is that I feel like God was like I have done such amazing work on you on the inside. I want your outside to match the work that I've done on the inside. Listen, okay, I said say less. Okay, okay, no, I didn't say say less. I actually was very hesitant because I was like, you want me to spend money? You want me to be out here? Like, and yes, and what was so interesting at that time, it was like, this is how, this is, this is what I love at least about my relationship is that the more I leaned into it, the more I got rewarded for it. And what I mean by that is like, the more I spent money on it, I would end up making more money. When I stopped investing in it, I, I, my resources would slow down. It was like, the more I spent on my beauty, the more money I made. Not because of the results of the beauty, but I felt like I was, you know, on assignment, right? And I was having a really good time. And, you know, I realized really quickly that I was like, oh, I don't know what my personal style is. Like, I, I know that I like makeup. I know that I like earrings I know that I like have my nails done like that that was kind of <laughs> that was kind of the gist and I kind of went on this this journey of like okay what what would it look like if I really leaned into the art of adornment what would it feel like what how how would I feel if I could look the way I wanted to look every day what would that be right what would it take okay and so basically um, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, I do want the outside of me 
to match, you know, the work that's been done on the inside of me. And I also remember, you know, in my prayer time, in my quiet time, very clearly getting the message like beauty is the tool that I've placed in your toolbox that you can use. Right. And so I thought about it like this. Right. I think about nature and how God could have made the world black and white. He could have made it 50 shades of gray. OK. I didn't. Wow. That didn't go the way I thought it was. Gonna go. But it, it could have been 50 shades of gray. Right. But we have there's so much beauty in nature. I don't care if you're talking about waterfalls. I don't care if you're talking about rainforests, flowers. The sunset, um, I don't care if you're talking about the desert, the safari, mountains, snow, like everything in nature is so ornate and beautiful and curated and crafted, right? And I will tell you something that I remember very specifically when I was diagnosed with cancer, I was at home for like a year, right? Um, I wasn't working. I was going to treatments. And I remember... I spent a lot of time watching sunsets, right? I was like, you know what? When have I just sat out and watched a sunset? And one of the things that I remember, and I think about this all the time, is that for one year, there was never the same sunset, ever. The the colors, the, the way the sky ended up being designed, it was different and breathtaking every single day. It's almost like the sky had on a new outfit every day, like I like... She was not changing clothes, okay? She was like, I'm I'm, I'm going to serve you a new look every single day. And I remember thinking, one, wow, we miss out on this just not by, by not observing it. But I also thought about, like, how beautiful it was. And it also made me think about, like, the beauty of nature. I know this is a little deep, but I'm, 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 telling, you, I'm telling you why this has become such a priority, priority in my life. And so that kind of did it for me. So it started with makeup, right? And I started really curating like my makeup collection and what I wanted to have what I wanted to look like and then it kind of moved into like fragrance and body care and skin care and then it kind of moved into like okay nail care and hair care and you know what do I want that to look like and then eventually obviously like wardrobe and clothes and style and all that so That's like the super long (laughs) backstory behind that. And so now I kind of want to tell you like the process that I went through and and what I'm still going through um, to curate my beauty, cultivate my personal style and how it has expanded beyond my person. Okay, so let me start there. The way it's expanded beyond my person is now has moved into my home and spaces. I've always been into decor and design, but I always kind of felt like it was frivolous until I actually could feel the difference in my body of when I had a beautifully decorated and clean and organized space and when I didn't. And I'm not even saying like a junky or dirty space, just like, okay, I'm just going to throw something together. The way I felt in my body was different. And the same was true for my own personal style. When Think about it. When when you know you looking right. Think of it. You you know when you looking right. When you got that outfit on that you know sit just right. When you know that your face is is sitting where you want it to be. When you know that your hair is fried dilated to the side. When you know that you smell delectable and delicious, huh? When you like when you know you out here killing folks. Like when you step into the room, you already like <laughs> I already know I look good. I'm not saying that y'all don't look good, but I'm saying what I know is that I look amazing. You know, when you put that whole thing together and you be like stunning. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When you look in the mirror, it's like when you get home, you like, I don't even want to take this off because I'm out here looking delectable. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and I was like, I want that feeling more often than I don't want that feeling. And I was like, girl, then do that. Right. And I was willing to invest the time and energy to do that. So here's what I did. And this is very much strategist engineer in me is I basically created a plan. I created like a checklist by category where I kind of wanted to go through every aspect of my personal style with a fine tooth comb. And I wanted to get really clear about what I wanted in that area of a life, like down to like, here's what I want. I live alone, y'all. Here's what I want my pajamas to look like. Okay, right in the summer, in the spring. And so I did that for pretty much every aspect of my personal style, right? What is my signature makeup look? By the way, this is pretty much my signature makeup look, right? This is 
kind of what I like to look like on a daily basis if I don't know what else to do. It's a little heavier today because I was filming videos for something else, but it's basically a soft, neutral, glam look, right? Like that's, it's what I like, right? And, and I took the rules off that there was no right or wrong, okay? So I basically made like this checklist by area, like super detailed. And then I just started working through the checklist and asking myself like line by line by line, what would make me feel amazing? What would I love? What makes me feel my best, right? I really was like feeling motivated. Um, you know, what would I like it to be in this area, right? What would be the most enjoyable, the most pleasurable? What would feel good to me? What would make me be like, what would give me more of that feeling on a consistent basis? And so <laughs> believe it or not, Curating my beauty, finding my personal style, the art of adornment really became less and less about like, oh, this is what I'm trying to project in the world and more about like, how do I want to feel about how I'm adorning myself and how, how do I how do I want that to make me feel right? So I created these super expansive <laughs> checklists and then I kind of created a plan where I was like, okay. I'm going to audit like what are the areas where I feel like I've already made that decision? What are the areas where I need to actually sit down and think about it? What are the areas where it's like I'm kind of in the middle? What do I want? I got really clear on my desires for all those different areas. And then I kind of created an action plan, right? Okay, here's the order that I want to go in. And I did I did not try to do it all at once, right? Like I've been I've been in this process for some time now. Um, and there are certain categories where it's like, I I've landed. It didn't take that long. I know what I like in this area. Boom, bang, pow, whatever. There were some areas I needed to learn about. And I knew that, um, or I, or I, I won't say need, I desired to learn about. And so I wanted to take the time to do that. And then I created a shopping list. Okay. So purging, shopping list for different categories right again not for me to purchase all at the same time obviously but for me to be strategic and intentional about the purchase I was making whether that was with skincare whether that was with undergarments whether that was with shoes or bags or jewelry or fragrance or makeup I kind of knew like this is um what I need based on what I've decided that I want to look like or feel like in this particular area and then I would say, particularly when I got to the like fashion and clothes and things like that, that's kind of the phase that I'm in right now is I had to figure out new places to shop y'all. Like I, once I really got clear about that, there are certain things that I like and certain things that I don't like for me, um, how I want to look on a daily basis, how I want to look on special occasions and, and everything in between. I was like, oh, I need new places to shop because these other places aren't giving, they, they don't have what I, what I want. They don't have what I desire. And y'all, I have spent months putting together like a list of places to shop because I was like, okay, I'm in my forties. I'm not trying to look like a teeny bopper. Okay. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to look like an Instagram baddie, but I'm also not trying to look like somebody's grandma either right like I I want to look like me I don't want to look matronly now that may be somebody else's aesthetic not my aesthetic okay but I also don't want to look like I'm still trying to get in the club like I'm 25 either like I don't want to do that either right and so I had this checklist I had this action plan I kind of asked myself all these questions and then I was like I need to put together like a shopping guide because I was like where do I need to go to shop and so I started watching like all of these fashion content creators and all these different people. And I started doing like social media searches and Google searches and saving things and being on Pinterest, whatever. And I, what I was looking for was not just the specific item. I was like, where are places that I can go and shop repeatedly that will bring me the kind of items that align with my personal style? And I actually saw somebody post this on social media the other day they were like if you're over 40 where are you shopping but you're not looking like a grandma and I mean th this it got hundreds and hundreds of comments of people like yes I need to know because I can't keep getting all my clothes at forever 21 when I'm in forever in my 40s like like and there's nothing wrong with forever 21 I, I, I haven't shopped there I don't know in how many years right um because even when I was younger I, I found that it really didn't fit my personal style right so 
anyway, um, and so that's kind of what I've been doing is I've, I've got the checklist. I've got kind of like the assessment. I've got the action plan and I have like a shopping guide of all of the resources that uh, all of all of the resources or places that I can go to shop. And, you know, and it's so funny because like people in my life are like, can I have a copy of that? <laughs> <laughs> because they were like, you've already done the work, right? And so I was like, you know what? Maybe I should put something together, right? So that if you, like, even if you just want the shopping sites, like I, I can put, I'm going to put a document where it's like, here's just the shopping sites. Uh, if you just want that, right? Like if you already know, like, okay, I can, I can do the rest. Um, I have created that. It's complimentary. There's no opt-in. You can just download it. And be on your way, right? If you want like my checklist and my action plan and like the questions I ask myself and all that, I've created that. You can get that as a digital download if that's something that you want to invest in. But um, yeah, like, <laughs> like I, you know, some of the things that I've realized along the way is I don't like denim on me. I realized that I was like, I have tried denim dresses. I have tried jeans jeans skirts I have tried, like I was like oh I'm not a denim girly and I kept trying to make myself like denim and I was like surprise shocker you're not a denim girly I also realized I'm not a big fan of pants me personally right I was like I don't want to think about what top goes with the bottom right I was like the thing I love about dresses is it looks like I tried but I really didn't I picked up one item of clothing and maybe I looked together okay these are things I've learned about myself, right? I mean, you could also accomplish that same thing with a jumpsuit, right? Or a romper, right? I also realized that my everyday aesthetic is slightly dressier than um, a lot of people in my life or the or the immediate world around me. And I had to be okay with that. That, that the, what I view as casual for me might be a little dressier to somebody else, right? How I like to look every day, you know, kind of what my baseline is, is going to be different than a certain segment of the population or, or, or a certain demographic of the population. Um, I also realized like, I'm really not into trends. I also, re for me personally, um, I also realized, what else have I realized? I also realized I'm not the cool fashion girly I don't want to be edgy. I like to be pretty, feminine, a little sensual, a little urban, um, a little glamorous even, right? And so, but figuring out what that was for me, like, I was like, I like skirts, but I love a fashion sneaker. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I like, you know, soft-ish makeup, but sometimes I like it with a little color, right? I don't want like a big yellow bowl cut crease for me. But that doesn't mean I don't want a little blue duochrome tapping on the lid on occasion, right? I also like, like I said, a soft lamp, but that don't mean I don't want a big hoop earring from time to time. Like, so I had to get really clear about what I want. I realized I'm not a necklace person. I am an earring person and a bracelet person for sure, right? You know, so just really, and then also like going through and purging and you know, updating my closet and then also put in a system in place. It's like, okay, after I do all this work and get really clear, how do I stay on top of that? Because my, my taste may change in a year, right? And, and my style may evolve again in different seasons of life. And I don't want to get back to the point where I would have to start from scratch. I wanted to really put a system in place to maintain the work that I'm doing, right? And how do I continuously update this? How do I check in with myself? Do I still enjoy this, right? Like, I like I'll give an example. There was a point in time where a liquid black cat eye, I could not leave home without it. Like, if I had makeup on, it was going to have a liquid black cat eye. Now, today, I still have a cat eye. It's much softer. Very rarely are you going to catch me with a liquid matte cat eye. And not because the girly set is out. It's because I decided that this is what I like better, right? You know, there's so many rules. Don't part your hair this way. Don't do that. I, I, I don't pay attention to none of that. What, what looks good on me? What do I like? What makes me feel good, right? And so 
Anyway, I have talked your 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 ear off long enough, but let me know, are you in the process of curating your personal style in your 40s, in your 30s, in your 20s, in your 50s, you know, in your 60s? If you're watching this, right, I know I've got a little bit of a range on my channel, at least that's what the analytics tell me, right? Let me know, let me know, um, you know, if you, if you are feeling the guide and you want to get that. Uh, with all all the shopping uh, places in there, because I was like, I had to, yeah, I had to create a whole project management board in Asana to keep track of this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, this is how serious I took this. So anyway, just let me know, you know, some tips uh, that you can give us for those of us who are still in the process of curating our our, our our personal style, right? Another thing I realized is that I really like color in my wardrobe, right? There was a season in my life where I thought I didn't. I thought I was a neutral gir girly. Now today doesn't help. I still like black, okay? But I realized I was like, oh, I like to be in color. I find myself gravitating towards color 98% of the time, right? Um, and there was a time where 98% of my wardrobe did not have color in it. So uh, it has truly been a transformation. I'm still on the journey. Like I said, I'm not a personal style expert. I'm not a fashion girly, but I am a woman who likes to look good. I enjoy the art of adornment. Um, and yeah, and let me know if you want me to share more about like, okay, here's what I cultivated for my hair, my skin, my nails, my wardrobe, my jewelry, my, my whatever. Um, and even like cultivating my spaces, right? And the things around me. So let me know. I look forward to your tips or your questions and comments below this video. And uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for another video, if you want me to do more of these. And I will see you in my next video. Peace.